I often wonder, how are discoveries made? Does an individual consciously decide to innovate, or do ideas emerge from the ether, sparking new advancements? How much of what has been discovered has been forgotten, and will we perhaps rediscover it? The mental toll of exploration seemingly strengthens our resolve to push onward, even when time seems to be an obstacle. Our minds are always racing, but what if we paused and took a closer look? Perhaps we just need to step outside and observe to truly see what we can uncover. So once you install mScience from mInstaller, you can go into Resolve and go up to your effects. And then in the search bar here, you can click on the magnifying glass to pull it up. Just type in mScience. And the first thing we'll see if we click our video transitions, we can see the transitions we have access to. We can go to titles and we can see what kind of titles we have. We have backgrounds, infographics, miscellaneous selections and typography. And then if we go to our effects, we have some looks movements, overlays, and split screens. And typically when you're using an effect, it's best placed over an adjustment clip and we'll display that in a minute. But let's just hover over our looks and let's just preview some of these. You can hover over and just to preview what this is going to look like. And these looks can create some really unique feels. Like for example, I use the depth in the intro. So I'm just gonna go ahead and place it on the adjustment clip here. And let's just disable our in and outs for now. And if we scroll through this, you can see for the clock shot, it gives just a nice soft edging to really hone in the focus on the, the clock itself and not the rim around it. Within the inspector, we have options to be able to move this mask around so we can change where we want that focus to be applied. And if we pull down our feather here, you can see exactly where that mask is. So if we just push our feather up, we can hide that edging. Now we can go to the actual footage controls and we can modify the footage if need be. For example, if we wanted to make it a little bit more red tinted, we could just shift this a little bit towards red. I'm gonna go ahead and expand our window here. And let's just go ahead and remove the depth and let's try a different one like exposure. Now by default, this one gives a little bit of a white flash to it. And if we can scroll over our next clip, you can see it kind of gives somewhat of a bleach bypass type of look. And we can adjust how intense we want that glow to be. Just almost simulate a halation type of effect, but keeping it more subtle and less red fringy. And of course we can toggle our in and outs as well. As we played this back, it definitely gives us a different feeling for the clip so far. Now moving on to the next clip here, we have a clip of me walking down the stairs, but there's not a whole lot of movement elsewhere in the shot. And it can tend to feel a little bit lifeless. So what we can do with this, if we pull up our looks here, and let's just go into our overlays tab. And one thing I've really liked exploring is the grain distortion. And so before I add that, I'm going to go ahead and alt click this adjustment clip and copy it. And I'm just going to go ahead and remove this exposure thing here. And let's go ahead and add our grain distortion on the adjustment clip. Now by default, the distortion is very, very strong. So we can go up to our grain controls. And if we just drag our grain power back pretty far to something like that, we can play this back. And now we have a little bit more life in the footage, but we also don't want the edges around here to be too distracting. So we can add our vignette as well. So let's go ahead and throw in a vignette on there. And already that just takes away from the distraction of the outside and really just hones in the focus on the center of the screen with the nice looking windows and the subject. Go ahead and remove these in and outs as well. And then one thing I wanted to do in between these cuts was make it feel like there was a little bit of a glitch or a little bit of time that passed, even if it was minor in between each of these cuts. So what we can do with that is add a transition. So let's go up to our transitions here. And I used a refraction in the intro because it was subtle enough to where it didn't look like it was flashing, but it also looked like there was something that clearly changed. So when we add this into it, we get a nice little passage of time effect. Another one I really like was the defocus transition. So I'm just gonna ahead and throw this in between those clips. And this just gives like a really nice 
dirty lens effect along with some zooms and defocusing and is a great way to go from one place to another. Within these transitions we also have different parameters like how much we want this to zoom, how much we want that dirtiness to, to be present, or if we even want that at all. I actually typically like how it looks so I'll just keep it on for now. And if we go to our refraction transition, we can also see we can change the scaling of our refraction, how strong we want it to be, and if we want to defocus it and cause aberrations and really accentuate the passage of time. And if we have a look at our titles, we actually have quite a few things, including these animated backgrounds here. And we have this animated wall here that just animates over top of footage. We also have a number of different ones. We also have this canvas. We have dirt textures and we have solid dirt that does a zoom in. We have some film dirt, which when placed over top of footage, gives us this nice little white damaged film dirt look. We've got the M Science grid. We got a paper overlay. And what's unique about the dirt textures is if we place them over top, go ahead and send it to the letter box. If we go to the settings for this texture and we go to composite mode and we set this to screen, then we have some really nice animated dirt texture. Let me bring this window up so we can see our timeline a little bit better. But these are just some of the backgrounds we have access to. And if we go into our infographics, we have a lot of really unique animated texts here. A couple of my favorites the diagram which is really nice let's go ahead and pull this in for the diagram if we scroll through this we can see we have a list of stuff and we can actually go into our title settings and let's pull down our list control and what's nice about this list is it'll auto iterate these dots and animations based on how many lines it sees we have in our list so let's say i remove these bottom three now it auto iterates to four and if we scroll and play that through it'll still animate them accordingly. And if we wanted to change the appearance of this list, we could go to our graphics controls. We can adjust the height. We can make them closer together. We can thicken up these lines if we wanted to, or we can thin them out. And we even have a toggle to fill in the dots if we want to just have solid circles here. We can also add a little bit more roughness to the texture around the text. Another really unique one is the pentagon graph. This one's actually pretty fascinating. So let's go ahead and just drag this one over the ending here. And I'm just going to move this over to the side here. And if we go to our label controls, we see we have control over all of the labels at the same time, as well as individualized label control. We can even turn labels on and off very easily, which is really nice. And if we go to our graph controls, we can determine if we want to highlight in the middle. And let's go ahead and change this color so it doesn't quite blend in with the background as much. Maybe a nice bluish tint here. And we can use these highlight value sliders to determine how much of a certain section we want to have highlighted. And then we can even change the pentagon size and the labels will scale accordingly to keep the same distance from the pentagon. And then we have control over each individual line in here if we wanted to keep it enabled or disabled. So much really good control here in these graphs. And once again, we can add roughness to the actual pentagon if we wanted to as well. So let's zoom back out here. Let's go ahead and take a look at these progress bar type things. We have several things that are progress bar like, like the human progress bar one and two, the vertical bar and the horizontal bar. I'm going to go ahead and just delete the diagram of this first one here. And I'm just going to drag the horizontal bar in for now. And that exposure might be a bit much. So I'm also going to remove that. Take away the whole adjustment clip here. Now we have some in and out animations, of course. And we're able to control this title and subtitles as normal. But we also have control over the bar. And if we go down to our bar value, we can change the length of the bar and it'll scale with the percentage you set it to. And then you can adjust your bar width modifier to determine how far you want it to stretch based on the original value. And then moving on to the miscellaneous, we also have this M Science full timeline here. Let's just throw that on and we'll bring that lower here so it's not taking up the same real estate. 
and this also comes with some nice intro and outro animations and mid animations. We have the ability to toggle that animation on and off so we can just have it animate in, stay static, and then animate out. Or we could have it sliding as we go along. We could tell it how far we want it to slide. So the higher the value, the more it'll slide across. And we can also set the timeline mode to see if we want this dot to be at the beginning, middle, or end. So if we set it to start, we can see it starts at the beginning here. I'm gonna go ahead and reset that. And if we put it at the end, it'll go to the end of the timeline. So that one has some really fun control. Let's go ahead to this next one. I'm just gonna remove these dirt textures for now. And let's put on this timeline pointer. And this timeline pointer features a drop zone where we can go in here and we can put in whatever media or image we want to put in here. And this is just a great way to add a little bit more customization to the effect itself. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that one as well. And let's just scroll back here. If we look under our selections here, we have a number of different animated options. Let's throw in paint here. I'm gonna shorten this one just a bit and move it over a tad. We have a paint overlay that goes over top and we can place stuff either underneath it or on top of it. Really good way to highlight stuff. And there's also the selection line that we can bring in here. And maybe we just want to circle me. So let's go ahead and shorten this up after I sit down. And then we'll just bring the content controls down here. And we can increase the line thickness if we wanted to. But then we have something that draws over my head just to know that I'm thinking or yawning, I can't tell. And then I'm going to just bring up these windows here because we also have the typography section. And if we just hover over these, we have a lot of different presets that we can use for this. We have options for longer quotes or stuff that highlights. And there's so much to search through through here, so I'm gonna take off this line again. And let's just throw in this title here. And maybe I am thinking about high energy particle beams in this moment, it would make sense. And let's just remove these and show on this clip what we can do if we combine a couple of them. So let's go ahead and bring in this list elements here. I'm gonna bring it over to the right here. And then we can go ahead and grab our list tick and let's just throw that there. Maybe throw it a little bit extra ahead. And let's go ahead and just determine where we want to place it. Let's say I'm controlling radiation and materials. That would be great. So now once everything's loaded up, the check mark shows up. And we can also determine whether or not we want it to just fade on or if we want it to draw on. I would personally like it when it's drawing. So we have a little draw animation there, which is really nice. And maybe we just want to slide in this last title on top here. Let's go ahead and throw that after the check mark's been highlighted. Then we have this title here. Let's go ahead and bring that up a bit. And that just feels right. Go ahead and shorten that down so it disappears at the same time. And I really like how everything just kind of flows together in a really cohesive way. This plugin pack is so massive and has so many things to search through. I highly recommend you checking this one out. Let us know what you think and we would love to see what kind of stuff that you guys make with this. Leave a comment down below on what your favorite part of this was. And don't forget to check out this pack specifically at motionvfx.com. And thank you so much for watching. We're checking this one off. Take care.